So this is forced into a rectangle. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to, I can probably do this without annealing it. We'll see. But this one, I'm just going to grab it at the two ends. And as long as we twist a section in between, it'll, the twist will start in the middle and work to each end. But the way of twisting wire, that we hook one end on something and mm -hmm. twist with a drill, mm -hmm. it's tighter here or it's tighter there, one way or the other. But it's not evenly twisting, right? It's, it's right. And, and so trying to get the very last part even. Usually, we'd want to make the twist originate in the middle and spread to the outside. Okay. So this one, I'm just going to grab it with the pliers and twist it, and then I'm going to reposition my hand. And see right here, if I could hold my hand on the bench pin for stability, um, I wouldn't have this here where I'd be likely to damage my hand on it. Oftentimes, I'll sit at the bench in whatever position that I need to, to give myself the leverage that I need. But I'm just going to twist this without moving the pliers. and reposition my hand and each time turn it just a quarter of a turn so I'm not not um, overextending my wrist or hurting it too much. We'll twist it just a little bit tighter. Now we can look at the difference. See this one's got wide and narrow faces. Mm -hmm. This one's got a lot more movement to it if we roll it than this one does. A lot different. So when you see wrought iron work, the one that's done like this, there's a lot more labor involved. We've got to mm -hmm. make it into a rectangle stock, but it's a lot more interesting, isn't it? Rectangle I think 